Let's talk about York for a second. York is designed to take a four-door Jeep Wrangler on the bed on some of this Renogy system. So we've got a, here's the inverter. We've got the DC-DC charger. And what you're seeing right there is the solid state slimline lithium batteries. When we load the four-door Wrangler, we're going to do a little experiment here. We, I'm, I'm sharing a secret with you today. We want to be able to pull the four-door Wrangler right up to the back of the sleeper. However, I want to have a drum box up there. Let me show you what we're doing. What I'm showing you here is our over hood drum box. So we're calling this the table. What's going to happen is that four-door Wrangler you saw in the yard is gonna drive underneath this table and the drum box is going to be, or the cabinet is gonna be up on top. What's nice about our can drum solution is because it's so lightweight yet so strong, we can do this. The other thing that I'm playing with, this is a new design, is I'm designing it so that it's modular so that I can break it down. With the removal of two bolts on the side, a few bolts across the top, this whole side comes off. That side comes off, I can flat pack it. So I can put the table component on an oversized pallet and the cabinet on top and ship it to my customers if they wanna add one of these later on. What you're seeing here, this is the jig for the cabinetry. So we build them always the same every single time. We cut all of the pieces in advance and we assemble them as required. Here's our inventory. We've got drum sides, we've got drum backs, drum bases, the fronts, the doors. Uh, we've got some of our can steps up there in inventory. There's some of our clip angles that we use for in the corners, but we are we try to be really efficient and keep our costs down by building these uh, components all at the same time, all in advance. I told you this was gonna be random. Here's some of our inventory of the drum cabinets. We're trying to stay ahead of our orders. If customers want them, we wanna be able to get them on a pallet and ship them quick. What's cool about our over hood drum solution is it's 42 inches tall, 48 inches deep, and six feet wide. If you calculate the cubic foot storage in our over hood drum solution, it's bigger than our traditional drum boxes like that one and the one that you see over here on Blue Swan. This drum box, six feet wide, seven feet tall, and 16 inches deep. So traditional drum box, here's our cubic foot of storage, our over hood drum box. This is our cubic foot storage. I'll show you something else inside of York. York is a Volvo VNL 760, so it's the little bit smaller sleeper. From the factory, these 740s, uh, usually rarely, rarely see them with the table and benches back here. What we're doing is, well, first of all, we're fixing a fridge. We've already repaired that. I gotta get that mounted back in there. We are converting what was a just a lower bunk into a table and benches. So we've created a hinged access. We've got some of our lightweight carbon fiber can bed material. We've got pieces that are closing that in because from the factory, right, you didn't really see underneath here. So we're closing it in nicely painted black. We've created a pass through here as well. So we've got for fishing rods, we've created a little tunnel that goes from that jockey box to that jockey box. If you're interested in seeing some of the specific tasks and projects we have on any of these RV haulers, please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a video just about that Titan moose bumper that you saw. I'm gonna have a video on the IQ air conditioning DC system that I spoke about earlier. I have a video as well, upcoming, on some of this Renogy system. So we've got a Here's the inverter. We've got the DC-DC charger. And what you're seeing right there is the solid state slimline lithium batteries. So these are 1,331 watt hours, just over a thousand amp hour. We've got two of those that are gonna be going into York and powering remote systems. So when we're boondocked, we're gonna have that solar up on the drum box that I talked about. Lots of lithium ion, small form factor batteries and inverters. Hmm. Are you with me so far? So we've got an over hood drum. It's really got more cubic foot of storage than we've ever had before. And it's got a really large footprint up on top. We've specifically designed all of those measurements so that we can put full size solar panels on top of that over hood drum. This over hood drum is gonna result, the heights that I told you about are such that this solar panel 
is just level with the roof of the sleeper. So we're, we're trying to get as much solar exposure as we can. If you want to, certainly we can look at getting that tilting, getting them orienting in the proper direction if you're parked for a longer period of time. But at least while we're in motion, the solar is protected. It's not gonna be caught by any trees when we're going through campgrounds, but we've got a lot of square footage and we get some good wattage up on top of that drama. So a lot of what we're gonna show you today is applicable to what I would say four different scenarios. So some of the technology we're implementing here today is applicable to um, Renogy's marine applications, or in this case, I'm gonna call this an RV application. Uh, we can also use this technology from Renogy for off-road, like uh, throw that in your Jeep, throw it in your Bronco, get off-road, get those systems uh, available to you with Renogy. And the other one is um, for your home. So if you're looking at doing you know, something in your home, having a battery backup system or going completely off grid, a lot of this technology is applicable. Now let's zero in on what we're specifically installing and how I've installed it here. The heart of what we're doing today is installing the super slim solid state lithium batteries. So these are just over 1300 watt hours. And you see we've got two of them installed in the, what I would call the jockey box. And along with them, we have the 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Renogy. So let's just do a little bit of a comparison. So those Renogies that I showed you, the solid state super slim is replacing, you know, in this truck, we've got four batteries. Now these are lead acid installed side by side and heavy and what we're able to do with the Renogy system is the solid state has removed that concern with some of the thermal runaways, right? We can charge those batteries and we don't have that thermal runaway concern we've traditionally had with some of the LiPo solutions. While I'm on this side of the RV hauler, I'll show you where we chose to install the DC to DC charger. So we're installing it right here. Now this is uh, rated for installation in full weather exposure so this could be you know outside you know on the frame or near your alternator but we've chosen to put it here we've got um you know a really good shielded location out of the weather and we had the space we had a nice mounting location so we're able to see our indicator lights from here and we also had very good access to being able to run across to the other side where the actual solid state batteries are and the inverter. Jumping around a little bit, kind of in this install you saw just a moment ago, we're getting ready to install the Renogy solar panels up on top of that over hood drum that we call it. Uh, something else that I've been really happy with as we're doing this install is the documentation and the installation instructions. They are really well done. They guide you through step by step in getting this whole system installed. I was particularly happy to see how they guide you with, depending upon the lengths that you're running. So we're running from a 165 amp alternator, big alternator on these trucks, of course, right there. And we're running to a location there. They give us the perfect instructions on what kind of gauge wire is necessary given the distances that we're traveling. We've chosen to go, we're going with an eight gauge. Um, we're being, a, just because it's our style, Everything we do is always loomed just for that added level of protection. And we are putting in the properly sized resettable fuses at a few locations uh, throughout the system to protect and give us the ability to turn it off completely, but also protect from uh, high current issues or concerns. So a few statistics for you and some numbers that I think were important to me is this is at just 2.4 inches thick, this solid state battery from Renogy is able to go into some of the really smaller confined spaces that we have, perhaps if you're doing with marine or you're dealing with off-road, even an RV, right? Some of our smaller RVs have very limited space. So we're able to stack those in there very well. I love the brackets that are available with them. Now, let's talk about that thermal runaway a little bit more. So when we put the current, right, we're gonna be supplying with that DC to DC charger, 50 amps into these. With the current that we're putting into these, they heat up nine times slower than the traditional LiPos that we saw in years past. So that is a significant comfort 
to know that these aren't going to get the thermal runaway. So we can communicate with these Renogies either with Bluetooth, uh, with an app on our phone. Um, they do support the CAN, the CAN communication system. So there is the CAN um, wiring system that, so we can provide physical monitoring of them as well. One of the numbers I saw were, were, were sometimes uh, glossed over was how many amps we can actually pull from a battery. Years past, we were seeing, you know, at around 100 amps. These allow you to pull a full 200 amps. So if you are looking at powering, in this case, a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, we can pull the amps necessary out of these batteries to uh, get that inverter the full power it requires. Well, the grass is green here today. It's spring here in Canada, but there are times where we've got some cool temperatures and that's one thing that I'm attracted to these batteries with is how they perform in the colder temperatures. So when it gets down below those freezing points, I can still push 10 amps into these batteries safely for charging. So we can do those 10 amps at minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty cool temperatures, and I can still push power back into those batteries for charging. So I touched on the mounting system for these batteries. It is incredibly strong, so we don't have risk of vibrations. Uh, causing anything or causing issues with these batteries either. The mounting brackets are really strong and gonna last a long while when they're mounted in such a secure manner. So just to review, we've chosen a location for the pure sine wave inverter. We've got a great location for the batteries. You saw on the other side, we've mounted that uh, DC to DC charger. What we're doing now is we're installing the cabling, resettable fuses, and the bus bar for the ground that is shared between all of these devices. So our style with uh, creating connections you'll see throughout this RV hauler is not only do we like the heat shrink crimp connectors, but we also like to put three to one ratio heat shrink with the adhesive on the inside. So no moisture is going to get in those connections. And if you have the opportunity, even when you're in protected locations like this, which is completely weather tight, you'll see we do the same thing. We've got not only crimped, but heat shrink connectors everywhere that we do our wiring. Lots of loom. Make sure that you try to use wire ties wherever possible to keep it very sturdy and keep that movement from introducing faults in the wiring or shorts in the future. So for solar, I haven't quite decided yet whether I want to do that single solar panel that you saw on top of the drum box or if I am going to orient them. Um, and just cantilever them out a little bit beyond the edge of the drum and get two of them up there. Haven't decided yet, but we'll find out pretty soon. Here inside the sleeper space, remember I showed you a moment ago how those solid state batteries were oriented. You can see that from inside here as well. What we're planning to do for the control for the inverter, so I'm probably gonna put it on this wall. So I'll be able to run it inside the cabinetry across the floor and over to the 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I'm gonna pull our eight gauge power, eight gauge ground across to our positive and negative bus bars on this side. While Austin's working on this, you can see Rob is got our mounts started for the drum box, the overhood drum supports. And we've got a we're going to relocate those lights, of course. They, they don't do much up there, so those are going to be coming. We'll probably put maybe some taller, slimmer line LED floodlights up here. Black to black. Find a good spot for this. Oh yeah, we should. It, we'll get it up on here. That'd be a good spot. Of course, we're taking care to make sure that all of our cable lengths are the same. Back to that bus bar. 